So you got your new embroidery machine. Now what are you going to do? It seems so complicated. Keep watching and I'll show you what you need to do to get started. You get this gorgeous embroidery machine and you get it home. Now what do you do? It can be pretty overwhelming. Hi, my name is Sue and I am from OML Embroidery and today this is what we're going to be talking about. Beginners, beginners to embroidery. So the first point I'd like to make is that everyone had to start somewhere. I started somewhere. I've been in business for 15 years running a very successful embroidery uh, business and we digitize. Of course, Don is my partner in that. I've been doing it for a long time, but I do still remember what it's like to be a newbie and it's kind of hard um, back then 15 years ago there were no Facebook groups um, there wasn't barely any help and you know I just had to figure out everything on my own and it was a lot of work I think it took me a long time to get used to it so first be patient so that's the number one thing be patient now depending on what kind of machine that you have, the first thing you need to do is unpack the machine. To have a checklist and make sure you have all the things that you were supposed to get and be very careful unpacking it. You don't want to damage anything. So that's where to start. Lay everything out. Have a good look at it. Take a deep breath. I'm going to say that a lot. Take a deep breath. The second thing that you need to do is figure out where you're going to put your machine. Now, some people put their machines on the dining room table. Depending on your machine, I'm not going to recommend it for multi-needle machines because what happens is a lot of vibration and that will eventually break your machine. That will also cause damage and cause, you know, really not nice embroidery because it's vibrating. So that's the first thing. It has to be really solid. And, you know, for some single machines, you can plunk it anywhere and it won't matter. McDreamy is uh, the Brother Dream machine. That's the single needle machine that I have that I really enjoy for whatever reason. I've had multi needles, multiple multi needles for around 15 years. And for some reason, I just love McDreamy. Maybe it's because it's quiet for once. I can embroider without. Uh, all the noise so maybe that's why I like it I don't know but I do like it so dream machine I call them McDreamy I find them quite enjoyable now I have McDreamy on a desk and the desk is set because McDreamy the brother dream machine has huge hoops that that would be the next point I'm gonna make when you're picking where your machine goes, make sure that there's enough room for the largest hoop. And to do this, place your machine, turn your machine on, put the largest hoop on, and then you can move it around and make sure it doesn't hit anything. And that's really important because your embroidery could get messed up. It could get bumped. That's another thing. Make sure it doesn't get bumped or banged or anything. So with the multi machines, they will be side to side that you have to make sure it has enough room. You don't want it hitting a wall. I would suggest for the multi-needle machines that you purchase the stand that it comes with. I find, uh, you know, it may be a little bit of money, but it's completely hassle-free and I find it enjoyable. Plus it has places to put things. And the one I have for my brother PR uh, 1000E has drawers for the hoops. It has, you know, side things. It's just fantastic. If you can't do that, then make sure that your stand is going to be really solid and really strong. We have metal tables. We have one that we've used and that that works out really well. So make sure it's on a solid surface. Make sure there's no vibrations and make sure that you have more than enough room for your hoops 
and make sure that it's not in an area, high traffic area, so it won't get bumped. So another thing that I found with my machines, and it may be different for different machines, but what I found with my machines is temperature. A constant temperature makes a big difference with the machines. So we have temperature gauges everywhere and we keep an eye on it. The thread can change as well. If it's uh, here in Canada, it's humid and the thread gets a little more stretchy and it changes your tension. So that is a possibility if you're having tension problems, that could be it. So we keep a constant temperature, we keep it dry enough but not too dry and that way our thread stays the same and our machines are happy. Um, the other thing that you shouldn't do is don't put it, any machine, any machine at all, don't put it near a vent uh, because that's going to have air blowing on it and kind of move the thread. My machines do not like it. They just, tension goes off. They just stitch terribly. So we're careful about that. The other thing that it says right in the manual, don't put it near direct sunlight. So you don't want the sun beating down on your machine at any time. So you might have to think about the right place for it. Now we don't want it to be too busy. You don't want people bumping it. You don't want little ones getting into it. So you have to be careful. They're, the machines are, they will sew through your finger. So make sure it's in a safe spot. How about we say that? So make sure it's in a safe spot place. There's one more thing you can do before you start using it and what we do for every single machine, uh, whether it's the Brother Dream machine or a multi-needle that we have, is that we level the machine. It's really important that your machine is level for it to run properly. It's along the lines of the vibrations and everything like that. So you want it level, solid, away from walls, away from, you know, fans, ceiling fans even. Mine do not like ceiling fans. And once you get that all sorted out and it's all good to go, that's when you can get started. Now, the first thing that I recommend to people, and I know a lot of people don't do it because it's really dry reading, but check out your manual. Even if you just skim over the manual, that's good enough. So do that and keep it handy because you'll be able to look up stuff. Most manuals have a nice appendix at the back that you can search. Even better, find an online one and then you can literally just search the words and get through everything. So keep that handy, turn on your machine and grab a hoop and you need a little bit of stabilizer. Normally with the new machines, they come with a little bit of stabilizer and uh, grab a little bit of fabric and your embroidery thread and pick one of the built-in de designs. Most of the embroidery machines come with built-in designs and that's what I suggest you start with because they are built, they are made and built for your machine so you know they're gonna run well and that'll help you get used to the machine, get used to the noise, get used to how it works and you'll feel much more comfortable after you do that. But one of the main things is don't be frustrated. Don't have a cloud over your head and get really frustrated and really angry. There are answers out there and it will help you figure out how to use the machine. But if you jump right into it and get busy, but know what you're doing and know the machine, then you can feel free to do any design. When you purchase designs, most of them come with really good instructions. Creative Kiwi, for example, walks you through absolutely every step. So you will be able to follow it and accomplish something. So I would suggest personally, your first purchase design would be from Creative Kiwi. They're, they look amazing. They will build up your confidence. You can play with fabrics. You can do different things like that. It's amazing and you'll feel great. So those are the things that I think you guys should start with. This is 
opening the box and stitching your first thing. So hopefully this will give you a little bit of confidence, a little bit of information. Um, you should join our OML Embroidery University Facebook group. We have 5,000 people in the group. It's a very pleasant group and we don't judge anybody. So everybody had to start somewhere. So if you have questions, you can ask them safely there. No one will get mad or upset or anything. And please remember to subscribe to this channel. Um, everything is based on this channel, so subscribe. Get some embroidery friends to subscribe as well. And uh, like and share and pass the word around so we can keep doing things like this. It's kind of fun. I like it. So thanks everyone for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys are feeling more confident in every stitch when you get going. When you're an expert, you've got to still be confident in everything. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.